Geeks, just a friendly reminder that all shows on the Madness Comic Network are produced by their individual hosts and in no way reflect the opinions of the network as a whole. The statements in the following broadcast are not necessarily the opinions of the Madness Comic Network, its staff, sponsors, or contributors. This show is rated TVMA, as are all of them and all those other letters. Viewer discretion is highly advised, and, you know, just do what Doc says. Read that again. Peace, everybody. Ancient darkness is breaking through into our reality. The overlords are coming. Their demons united, they'll stop at nothing to tear our world to shreds. And the only thing that can stop them is the power of metal. You have been chosen by the gods of metal to lead this crusade of finger-shredding fury. You must write the sick riffs, craft the awesome lyrics, find unholy rhythms, and set the heads banging. Show the overlords that their darkness is nothing compared to yours. Gods of Metal is a co-op deck building game for one to four players. You and your bandmates must work to create the most powerful band in human history. Find mystical instruments of legend, outlandish costumes to improve your powers, and recruit mascots to help you battle the overlords. Find the power of pure decibels and use them to destroy your enemies by crafting songs that will literally blow their minds. Form a band. Save the world. Gods of Metal. Now on Kickstarter. I like these calm little moments before the storm. Money comes big, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not small, no, no, no. Kiss my entire... Oh, my darling, not three times on the ceiling if you want me. Your coffee, sir. Thanks, beautiful. You're welcome. Launching this Friday.
showtime, babies. Okay, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's tackle the elephant in the room. Uh, yeah, speaking. as usual, I'm getting screwed, Doc. It's not going to the madness and just says on YouTube that they're not. Their live streaming ain't working right now, but it seems to be working on your channel. <laughs> So bizarre. So Tanner Hurley is not here today with me. It is his anniversary to his lovely wife. And uh, they are off spending far more effective use of their time. <laughs> it doesn't matter what they're doing. It's more effective use of their time than being here. <clears throat> what is up, Laughing Road? Chris Brown, the manliest. Hey, I saw this. Where did it go? Abo Gris said... The chat here is the coffeines. Comic fiends, coffeines. I like it. I like it. So welcome. Let's see who's in the chat. We got Elon Mudd is here. The Laughing Rogue himself. Chris Brown is here. Hello. Good to see you, my friend. How dear. Always a pleasure. Good to see you. Abo Grizz, a complete rock star in his own right. Half of the Mo and Joe them crank out some fantastic work. Stephen B is here watching from the ship. Uh, I'm assumed that you were not press ganged into indentured servitude aboard a sailing vessel, so that means you're on a cruise. I hope you have a good time. Sketchy guy, what's up? What's up? Good to see you. <clears throat> and I think that's everybody that spoke up so far. If I ignored you, I apologize, but I will plead. I'm old, and that pretty much lets me get away with anything. <laughs> Carrie is here. Hello, the lovely Carrie. Ah, and Rex from Devil Flyer is here. Good to see you, Rex. Yes, age is the excuse for everything. So, he came on the show from the ship. Did he really? Oh, that's cool. Um, So, without Tanner here, we, we don't substitute Tanner with anybody. There won't be a great moments in comics history. We'll just pick it up next week when he returns. He's on a cruise. He says he has not been press ganged. Yes, I will be going on anywhere and everywhere that will have me when I'm out shilling. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, this is, I was sharing this with more than one person. When you launch a campaign, you got to do the tour. You got to get out on the campaign trail. You got to raise awareness for your project. Uh, so people will say, are you excited to launch the book? I'm excited to get the book in front of people, but the shield tour will drive you out of your freaking mind. People ask you the same questions over and over again, and you have to give the same road answers. And after a while, you start wanting to do bizarre things, you know, and say bizarre kooky things. And uh, you have to discipline yourself not to. So I kind of, you know, you see these, these, uh, movie stars they go on the talk shows back before the talk shows were all political Johnny Carson, David Letterman back in the day and they're out there talking about their latest uh, project whatever it might be I kind of sympathize with them now you know they're on their 300th time talking about this current project when they're already working on the next one you know so it's just <laughs> you tend to go nuts Get a Rex Flex to get me some vacuums. Hey, if I get a Rex Flex, I'll be a happy camper. <clears throat> so today I'm joined by a gentleman I've never talked to before, except in passing. We uh, follow each other on Twitter. So I'm going to be getting to know him as he introduces himself and his work to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Chris Hicks. Welcome, Chris. Hey, Doc. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me on. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure, sir. And uh, I'm not going to start asking you all the rote questions. Instead, we're just going to have a conversation. How's that? I love it. I'm here <laughs> for it. Congratulations on your book, by the way. And, and on it looks yours. really cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna start off, Chris, with with a little segment here we like to call. Immigrant 
farm oh, workers that, that, were out picking. I was laughing through the whole thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> our immigrant, <laughs> our immigrant farm workers are out there picking and harvesting only the freshest of memes for you. Uh, yes. So I didn't know it. You didn't know it. But it turns out that the uh, that the recent eclipse was actually an IQ test. This was actually said, ladies. Yeah, I've seen this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ on a cracker. How much stupider can a person get and still be allowed to be the host of a show? I don't know, but if this woman walked all the way from Guatemala, I'm a flying freaking monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no way. I'm just not buying it, Chris, is what I'm saying. They walked all yeah. the way from Guatemala in those skinny jeans. I, I yeah, feel right. bad for that man. Right, right. So, you know, also there's this one. This is a public service announcement to all our ladies out there that we care about. You know, stop filtering your pigs. You go missing. We're looking for Miss America instead of Bigfoot. Uh. We can't. <laughs> we can't find you. <laughs> oh my gosh! It, the reason why this one's funny is because it's it's true. Like you. Like, you hope you're never in a situation where we're trying to look for a Snapchat filter and not an actual person. If you have used one of these recently, you already know. I'm sorry. I had a laughing <laughs> fit. I had a laughing fit over that last one. Uh, I was wondering what happened. I thought I touched something. Oh, shit. I got broken. <laughs> I was laughing and coughing my brains out. Apologies for that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What's next? What have we got here? I am at the age where this house does not scare me, but the thought of bringing groceries up those steps does. Oh yeah, like I would, now, I would be back in. I'd be going up the hill with my car. Yeah, Fuck yeah, that shit. Like now, it, I'm at the stage of my life when I'm like dream shopping on Zillow, looking at these mansions I'll never be able to afford. I I, I put in must be one one floor only, one story. <laughs> Oh, like yeah. I'm ever going to get one of these in the first place, but you know, make sure it's one story. If it is me eating twice as much meat. So a vegan out there isn't making a difference. That's right. Take up the slack boys and girls for every vegan out there. We got to double our, our meat intake. Ugh, that's just, that's a lot of meat, man. <laughs> Join the fight. Let's see. Carrie says, Oh, doc, so this one, no matter the filter, we still look like big. That's not true. That's not true. Top of the line in homeless vehicles. That is absolutely true. The uh, the grocery the, the grocery buggy is the preferred the grocery vehicle, cart, yeah. The preferred vehicle of the homeless or the unhoused. Bacon is actually the second reason I'm not a vegan. I'm not a moron being the first. <laughs> <laughs> bacon is my second reason as well. <laughs> also, bacon. the shopping cart is the Honda Civic of <laughs> homeless vehicles. <laughs> One might say it is ubiquitous. So <clears throat> this one actually melted my brain. All right. Ralph Macchio is now older than Pat Morita was in The Karate Kid. I yeah, mean, he's what? a vampire. <laughs> like, Ralph yeah. Macchio is a fucking vampire, dude. Him and uh, who's that other cat? Justin Bateman. Is that the one? Uh, Jason Bateman, yeah. Jason Bateman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude, man, they, just cut it out. It's not fair. Share that elixir of eternal youth you guys have. Me and my paycheck trying to figure out when the government worked half my shift. <laughs> 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 hey, we're artists here uh, of one form or another. My daughter tells me you're an artist. Yes, I use stable diffusion. You have exactly <laughs> 10 seconds to get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> I type, uh, I, type, I type my imagination into a computer and it gives me an image. Yeah, 
you would you are you you identify as an artist you can say that but you are not uh, my pronouns are i and artist <laughs> Having already endured 37 minutes of Celine Dion's greatest hits, Alan had no choice but to eject. <laughs> I saved this one. Don't worry, my... man. His heart will go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saved this one into my Clip Studios file because I won't <laughs> change it from Celine Dion to anybody I'm hating on that week. Yes. <laughs> although, although, I mean, I'll... I... I have a guilty. I, I do. I do really like some of her songs. I I will admit that Listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not ashamed to say it. I do. I grew yeah, I'm up not with those lie. songs. I'm not gonna lie. I like Celine Dion, and I'm not gay. <laughs> right. Me too. <laughs> Just so we got that out there. <laughs> um, I like the fact that she's kind of a bitch. You know, I I, I dig that French Canadian side of her. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, well, I, yeah. I don't care anything about her as her personal views or her personal life. She oh, me can just either. sing. She can sing. Oh, she can <laughs> belt. Oh, yeah, most yeah. I mean, and people you know, fail to realize how effing popular she really was in the '90s, especially right. the mid '90s. I mean, right. she dominated right. everything. Was sung by her. <laughs> speaking of, speaking of people that have dominated. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that trick doesn't work here. <laughs> well, look, you must have quit. <laughs> the glove does not fit. All right, I need look, chat. Give me the line OJ is saying here. If I didn't but, sin, yeah. must let me in. All right, you know the biggest problem with pushing all things AI is wrong direction. I want AI to do my laundry and dishes so I can do art and writing. Not for AI to do my art and writing so I can do laundry and dishes. Exactly right. Yep. <clears throat> exactly. AI, right. AI has its priorities mixed up. Yeah, or the people using it do. Like if I had AI to uh, order groceries, bring them in, put them away, do my laundry, clean the house, hell yeah, bring on the AI. Uh, but if it wants to do the stuff I enjoy so I I can go do that shit, then no, it must be defeated at all costs. Yeah. My friends, my friends we are not the same. No. Just saying. Just saying. Let's see what the chat's got to say about it. Uh, so much vegan hate, I'm offended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Carrie says vegans are weird at a local grocery store. They want to put all vegan products in the same aisle. It is the lack of meat that means they can't walk around the aisles like the rest of us, you know? Hi, Doc. I got the news. What's up? I got the news. Um, the last show we did, the Comic Artist Hour, um, Jason Spriggs showed off one of his books that had some space ray guns in it. Oh, no. And they removed it, and I guess it kicked me out because of community violations where we showed some cartoon fucking guns. Jeez. What? You know, come on. That's AI at work for you, by the way. I, I got a strike today on my channel for calling somebody a fucking idiot. <laughs> Why do vegan women make no noise when they orgasm because they don't want anyone to know that they enjoy some meat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Sometimes it is what's for dinner. <laughs> Mom, what's a contradiction? Believing that 18-year-olds couldn't understand their student loan contracts <laughs> seven-year-olds can control their genders. And listen, I mean, this is this is the I mean, shit. I mean, they'll, yeah. They'll say this to you with a straight face. <laughs> No, you can't get a piercing or a tattoo by <laughs> no, liquor you can't take the military. To you a, no. Yeah, but uh, my six year old Jeez. Jeez, uh, I know. What I Doc, what is, what has happened, man? You know <laughs> like this this, this is, shouldn't you shouldn't have to remember when we didn't have to explain stuff like this to people? I mean people were stupid, <laughs> but they weren't this stupid. Right, right. They you weren't. have to start thinking that at some point it's agenda and they're doing it on purpose because you cannot be that. that exactly, exactly. And, and it is agenda driven. It's the message. and We all must comply. But that's what's crazy. What's the message? And if the message is something to do with kids, I don't want nothing to do with it. You leave yeah. kids alone, bro. <laughs> yeah, I've got a video I'll send you that I made about leaving the kids alone, but it, it, it would have got me banned from YouTube. So I don't Damn. play it on here. 
me yelling representative to the Ottoman speaking of AI. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have always like that. <laughs> I have always used a local mom and pop pharmacy here. Well, uh, 14 months ago, the guy retired. They sold out to Walgreens. And I'm like, oh, well, man. ordinarily I would have found another mom and pop, but this Walgreens is just a block away. So I'm like, all right, the convenience, I guess. Mm -hmm. So here I go, <clears throat> the very first time calling in a refill and a computer answers. So I just start saying pharmacy, 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 pharmacy. Far and eventually I get the pharmacy. <laughs> so while I'm talking to them, I said, is there a direct number I can call to get the pharmacy? So I don't have to sit through your menu options for a half hour just to make a 20 second declaration of what I need. Well, sir, I wish we could do uh, Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> yep. You know, anything you had to say other than sure, here's the number is not anything I want to hear. Bam. Signs you're a werewolf. Occasionally. You turn into a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> if this like, happens like, to you. He's, he's like, I knew it. <laughs> if if this ever happens to you, chances are you might be a werewolf. Follow your dreams. Never stop dreaming. Yep. One of the very few movie villains that actually scared me as a kid. I was an adult. They scared me. Well, you when don't you mess with people's dreams, bro. Everyone's got to sleep, and like you took that exactly. away from me, Freddy Krueger. Yeah, you yeah. Son of, you took even countless even, nights even, of my childhood away from me, you bastard. Yeah, even even Jason has to go to sleep. Even right. Doctor Doom and Darth Vader sleep. You know, Freddy's coming. The scene that got me was when Nancy wakes up in the hospital. I think it is, and the mother's there, and he can't hurt you. It's not real. If it's not real, then how did I get his hat? And she pulls his hat out from under her covers in the bed. I'm like, okay, that's fucked up. <laughs> I loved it because the, in those movies, you know, especially when you're watching it for the first time, you don't know what's a dream and when it isn't a dream. And that's, that's yeah. that to me, psychological terror on top of like the horror, like visuals. You know, it's really cool. Sure, 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 sure. So when you realize your streaming services cost more than cable did and you're still watching commercials, this deal is getting worse all the time. Listen, let me let me <laughs> clue you in. I, I'm talking to you right now, YouTube in particular. When I want to watch a video on YouTube, I didn't click on what I wanted to watch for you to play something you want me to watch. Now I get you got to play commercials. Then do like every other website in the world. Five seconds and it's skippable. But when you try to run a 30 second, a one minute ad on my ass, when I only want to watch a 30 second clip on YouTube, you must have bumped your head. <laughs> it is never going to happen. I will refuse to watch that video. I've done it many times. I've, I have literally yep. closed it, got back on it, closed it until it, it just said, screw it. I'm not giving you an ad. I'm like, yes, 20 Thank minutes you. later, That's, I win. I'll I am not watching your ad. I was just what about going to say, Chris, we must have been separated at birth. I do. This. These are the <laughs> these are the hacks, boys and girls. You can do that. Back yep. out, re-enter. Back out, re-enter. I will accept a five-second commercial or no commercial. I will not accept anything longer than that. I will that. accept a skip. Yeah. <laughs> what about the doubles? The ones that you they're like you can't skip, and you look over and it says two ads, and you're like, oh, 30 yeah, seconds. Yep, That's nope. a minute. Yeah, peace out. I'm not watching. Or the um, ones that aren't even ads at all, but you're just somebody's music video. Yep. Yeah, I'm not. And I'm like, what in the Lord am I watching this for? What is this? Right. It's not an ad. It's a music right. video. It's an actual video on top of somebody else's video. Yeah, and there oh, is yeah. a hack. Crazy. There is there is a hack for that, boys and girls. If you're watching YouTube and they keep ramming these ads down your throat, and you don't want to back out, come back in, back out, come back in. Click on share, embed, and click play. The ads will not be there. It's that simple. It's an extra step. Uh, Yep. But it's a big old it's a big old f you to Google. There's your there's your life hack. Let's see. Uh, leave the kids alone. Yes, absolutely. Leave the kids alone. You get asked for proof of age for alcohol gambling, but you but you buy your child a Ouija board. Yeah. Um, saying, sir, I wish we can. Yeah, it's important they don't want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, why does the wolf look like the one? 
he stood on the boat. I don't know what you people are saying right now. Is that English? <laughs> <laughs> but this is the, the, the crown meme of... I think they had a stroke. <laughs> I was wondering if I had one when I was at my coughing fit. Um, this is meme of the week right here. I think President Biden has done a wonderful job. Mom always said you were a fucking retard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Now, I guarantee you that was going to get me struck, but I don't care. <clears throat> this has been another exciting episode of... Yeah, you know the thing. Oh, man. Oh, that my music, gosh. The music for that is brilliant. Pop. I mean, uh, Doc, sorry, I didn't mean to say boss, but both that's, of you guys. But a... anyway, it's, it's funny. It's funny as fuck. That's, I love it. That's all right. Hiya, Fanta. <laughs> Good to see you, my love. So I've got some friends watching from over on the Facebook that uh, are just as inept as I am with technology. So let me give a shout out to Robin and a shout out to uh, uh, Shannon. Shannon and I were counselors together, worked together for many years. Happy birthday to you. Thanks for tuning in. <clears throat> Glad to see you. So we're going to be, uh, <clears throat> we're going to be talking to Chris here about his stuff. Chris, if you've got a link to a project, you want to pop into the private chat, we can share that out or you can just drop a link in the, YouTube if you want to. Uh shoot. Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, no, and no pressure. <clears throat> uh Chris is a writer and also well help. I'll let you do it. Tell people who you are and what you do, Chris. Let my chat know all about you. Um to keep it simple, I'm a, I'm I'm a writer uh and a and a filmmaker. I do producing um I guess if you could say do producing, I've, I produced several short films of my own. I've worked as a filmmaker. Um, I've written several scripts, books, all kinds of things. Uh, took time off, became a teacher, and now I'm getting back into the entertainment side and, and telling stories. And uh, the way I'm telling stories now is um, – bringing books to life. I have a bunch of uh, a series of short films that I've turned into um, short, short books, I guess you could say um, uh, like uh, that I'm going to turn around and also uh, create short films of them as well. So originally their their scripts turned into books that are going to be turned back into films. Nice. And I've started that series with um, my first book, what goes around, which right. was originally a short film, uh, but due to COVID and a whole bunch of other like mishaps and life just kind of coming at you sideways, I had right. to put it on the back burner. So when I decided to get to, to leave teaching and come back into telling stories, I wanted to uh, tell an impactful story that I think is really relatable. And it's about karma uh -huh. and it's about death and it's about, re you know thinking that you've gotten away with something just for it to come back and bite you in the ass in the future and i think it's something that a lot of people can relate to uh, it's a little bit sure. of a dark story i wrote it in a in a bit of a dark place um but I, I i believe in justice i believe in karma firm believer in that i think it comes for everybody and whether you want to think of it as a mythological thing or a tangible thing I wanted to write a story where I could maybe bring it into the physical realm. Sure. So I believe even if you don't believe in a universal karma, like what goes around comes around in a literal sense, I, you, you almost have to believe if you hang around the wrong kind of people, if you set yourself up, eventually whatever you want. Uh-oh. You froze on me, Chris. I, uh, <clears throat> I'm a Christian. I don't believe in karma, but I absolutely believe in the Christian version of that is that you reap what you sow. You know, if you plant watermelons, don't get all butt hurt when pumpkins come up. You sowed it, reap it. Did I freeze? My counter still counting. What in the heck does that mean? 6480. <clears throat> Fanta, explain. My brain must know. Chris, are you there? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I lost you there for a second. What was that? 
Yeah, yeah, you vanished on me. Yeah, I just I came in when you when you fell Can out. You and just said yes. Do you hear me? Uh, okay, so I'll just pick up where I think I left out. I, I, my apologies. Uh, so I wanted to to tell a story about karma and death in a literal sense and a physical sense teaming up to do what they do best. And I wanted it to be the ultimate version of what it could be. And okay. so I started creating the story around a, a character with a dark past. Um, she's a suburban housewife. Uh, she's got, you know, pretty much everything you could ask for, you know, the typical, uh, American dream, great family, husband, kids, car, all that. She's living the good life, but she's got a deadly, deadly secret in her past. And one faithful night when her guard is down and she's just enjoying what a regular evening with her family turns into a nightmare of epic proportions with when two strings when two strangers come calling and uh it's it's it, it, it kind of snowballs from there into a, what did she do why did she do it who are these people and okay. what is going to be uh what is going to be the justice what is going to be done to her to even out that karmic okay. justice that right. universal scale so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah with a little bit of a twist at the end but that's awesome yeah, man. That's that it. sounds sounds very cool um yeah, and, and, you know, here's the thing. I, I was saying uh, I don't believe entirely in karma. I believe in the Christian version. You know, you reap what you sow. Um, mm -hmm. But I do absolutely believe that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And that's not just in physics. That's in everyday mm -hmm. life. So all of us, exactly. by the way, when people say, Chris, they will say, oh, that's not fair. I'm always quick to say, are you sure you want what's fair? You better mm -hmm. think about that. Most for a people minute. do not. Do you not might, understand that. Yeah. Yeah. You you might not want fair. Fair is what you deserve. Um, I don't ever want what I deserve. No, thank you. <laughs> hey, Katie. Hey, welcome. Um, and I don't think nobody ever really does. And that's the that's the scariness yeah. of it. Like, yeah. People ask you, is this a, is this a scary book? I make it psychological. It's horror as in physical. It's mm -hmm. meant to make you think. You're supposed to, to put the book down and go, oh shit. Uh, do I have anything in my past that's going to come back and, and bite me? Um, and, and yeah, and the answer I wanted is, to make you think about yes. how you know cause and events and you know, cause <clears throat> and effect. Yeah, everybody, yeah. everybody has something that's going to come back or could come back and bite them. I mean, think about when you're a little kid and your mom said, "Did you break that lamp or spill that drink or whatever?" And you lied your ass off. You said no. You know. That was that was your introduction to that that you reap what you sow karma thing, because mm -hmm. you know your your mom or your dad they're gonna that now you're getting punished because you lied and you committed the act exactly by the time it's you double adult, it's double what it should have been because yeah. you just didn't man up and take the take the right. hit and and now we're all as adults you are absolutely you've got something in your past we all do everyone has done things they regret made choices a when they should have made b or b when they should have chosen a it's still there katie is caroline hello caroline welcome good to see you um you're so exactly yeah, every, right and even if you've made a even if it's a mistake out of naivety mm -hmm. or youth or whatever have we've all had those and, we, and we've all dodged the karma bullet too like sure. it could have gone this way and it didn't. Oh shit! But right. this, it, with this story, and, and and because I believe in hard truth is is a wake up call a lot of times, and I needed to 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 amp it up. So right. I had to like not only when you find out, oh it's this. Well, it's not just this. It's this, 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 and then you're like, holy shit! And then so at the end of the thing, you get that you're left with this the ultimate version of what. I think any person could ever have to deal with when it comes to karmic justice. Like I sure. hope that nobody ever has to go down yeah. that road. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, if you ever, and I haven't read the story, but I would just say that, you know, when, when it comes time to reap what you have sown or when karma comes calling, however you want to look at it, 
when it comes calling, how you handle it is still sowing into the future. You know, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to make it worse to reap something worse down the road. So Chris, let me ask you a question. First of all, how old a mm-hmm. fellow are you? And secondly, how long have you been a storyteller? Cause that's what I'm hearing that you are. Yeah. Um, I think if you like, put a gun to my head, are you a storyteller? Yes. Uh, I've been a storyteller since I was eight years old, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm 40 years old now, but, um, when I really, uh, I guess I've been telling stories my whole, my whole life. I entered a contest for my school in third grade, uh, uh for a short story and you win a uh, mountain bike if you won and I won. Uh, and not only did I win, but they took my story and printed it all over the district and gave it out to all the teachers. So that kind of sparked my, my, uh, creativeness for storytelling but i would say 20 20 plus years of being in the entertainment business i didn't always start out as a storyteller i thought i wanted to be an actor Mm -hmm. so you know as a kid i'm i was enthralled with movies and stuff and being a part of the story i didn't realize i wanted to be the one creating it until i actually got my foot into acting and i was like ugh, this fucking sucks (laughs) chris my chat (laughs) and i don't want to be the person i would have to be to become successful Oh, well said. So that I'm my, uh, my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? My shot at fame, it came and it went. Um, mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was a counselor at a large, uh, substance abuse treatment program for felons. <clears throat> and one of the girls in the program mm-hmm. got hired by a movie production company to be an AD. I don't know how that happened. It was an AD for casting for the extras. So she got everybody that needed a job, a job as an extra. Uh, And they were filming it at my church. It was called the wronged man. It had Lisa Bonet in it. Um, I've never seen it, but uh, the Mm. real casting director contacted me to get my permission for these guys to come out there and work because they needed our permission to do it. And I said, yeah, on one condition, you got to get me a speaking role as an extra. And I said it as a joke, but he was like, okay, I got you. Well, sure as shit. Uh, I had a, I had a line. I was supposed to say to this. Did they do it the right way? Uh, well, here's what happened. Um, I went in and I tested and I blah, blah, blah. And they said, yeah, you're good. So, uh, the morning that I'm supposed to show up on set to say my line to the protagonist uh and my line was why did you even bother coming back here all right uh (laughs) my phone my phone rings i've had pneumonia and coughed myself hoarse and i answer the phone hello and i'm like no fuck it i'm doing it my my throat will clear up by then i know it will i know it will no i get there i can't talk so i never got my break i never got my break but i did I did get to hang out with craft services. <laughs> mm. I spent many a time sniping off craft services. Hell yeah. Some uh, good, some bad, some I wouldn't touch with a nine foot pole. But <laughs> I, I, I've, hey. been, I've been extra on a lot of sets. So like I perused uh, and that's where I got my love of like, like I don't want to be an actor. I want to tell these stories. I want to create these worlds. Right. I want to create these characters and I want to, right. um, and I want to evoke emotion and, and relatability within sure. people and make them make them think. But yeah, yeah. Okay, so the title of the book is "What Comes Around" by Chris. What goes Hicks. around? What goes around? I'm sorry. Yeah, um, that's okay. So, where can people find the book? And am I hearing you correctly that you're turning that into a short film? Yeah. So right now with the book, I'm I'm doing a special promotion. Uh, I wanted to do a thank you bundle but I also wanted to give people an opportunity to get in on the filmmaking process. Mm-hmm. So I'm offering uh, the book, a copy of the book and two stickers as well um, that their initials uh, karma is a bitch and a thank you card. And you also get your name down as executive producer in the credits of the short film. And oh. I'm giving away 35 of those bundles. There's about 30 of them left. There's special okay. editions as a thank you. And if you follow me on Twitter, you can see the links there to go to my pay hip where you can check out the bundles. 1299 
and that's with shipping included. So you get all three of those things, plus you're included as an executive producer as a thank you. And yes, I'm turning this into a short film. And after the short film, the book will be available on Amazon and digital. <coughs> Fantastic. And we There's start his... filming the short film this summer in Louisville. Oh, great. Kentucky. All right, there's the uh, there's his at handle on the Twitter if you want to get over there and check that out. Excuse me one sec. I'm old and I smoke too much. All right. So I want to continue this conversation, but we gotta we gotta pay the bills here. So let's gonna we're gonna play a couple more ads for you from some of our sponsors. They keep the uh, they keep the lights on here. Flip City Magazine is just really pulling out all the stops, man. Your guys' production value of this of this magazine has gone insane. I mean, look at that. I mean, I remember when you guys, it was black and white. Even when it was black and white, I thought your quality was great. But, Dan, they have just, I mean, they just really stepping it up. And up. Look at this. James Corbett, boys. James Corbett. Genuinely cutting. Um but also funny and obviously just chaotic and, and very fun. I love Flip City. It has brought new types of badassery and integrity to the print medium. Glamorized and embraced by Hollywood, feared in the underworld, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel was one of the most powerful men in America. He was also one of the most hated. The man who gave birth to Las Vegas was gunned down in the luxurious home of his glamorous lover. Almost 80 years later, his murder remains unsolved. Who killed Bugsy? The final frontier. It has never been so uncertain as now. AI, VR, haptic wear, nanotechnology, mass destruction with a remote click. Now we are finally seeing the true potential and dangers of an ever-connected and overly policed hyper-technological world. Have we finally become the architect of our own demise? Is there still hope? Welcome to the future.
Welcome to Punk Droid. We are back. <clears throat> Thanks for hanging in there, boys and girls. Our lovely sponsors with their lovely products. Be sure you check those things out. We're talking with Chris Hicks, a filmmaker, writer, creative, storyteller. Are you still with me, Chris? I like these. I calls. am here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Crack myself up. Hold on. I like these calm little moments before the storm. So, Chris, um, <laughs> where, would we have, is there uh, a body of work? Are there other short films you've got out there that, that uh, others can go and yes, check sir. out? I think we've got a delay going on. Uh, yeah, I do have an um, IMDb page. Um, I haven't updated it in a while, uh, to be quite honest with you. At the time of its conception, early in my career, I wasn't the one handling that. And a couple of my short films have bounced around from different sites and different channels that I've really kind of been compiling them up over the years. And I've shown them before. Um, but uh, I took a break and like I'm kind of coming back and rebuilding everything from scratch. and. Um, I'll slowly start to show and, and put things up on my own channel that I started um, direct links for people to check some of those things out uh, and a few projects that I worked on unfortunately I don't have creative control over them and due to you know the business being what it is I don't even have access to get get a hold of um, some of those projects to show people unfortunately right. yeah it happens so uh, for those of you who don't know uh, Chris does have a YouTube channel <clears throat> if you want to put that in the chat, uh, Chris, you can uh, check him out on his own YouTube channel, uh, which I, I don't. What is the name of your YouTube channel, Chris? Oh, oh, we lost him. We lost him. He left us. He left us. He'll be back. Um. Interesting conversation. Uh, Chris and I do not know each other. Um, hey, welcome back, buddy. Sorry, I lost connection. I have no, no. idea how that happened, but I'm uh, back. It, it, no worries. It happens. Um, I was just telling the chat. Um, Chris and I have never really spoken before other than a couple of DMs, you know, uh, saying hi and whatever. Follow each other on the Twitter. Mm -hmm. And he, he looked like an interesting fellow. So I thought I'd bring him out and... Uh, but you, in in your own right, have a YouTube channel, Chris. Why don't you tell people where they can find you over there? Um, I have a, a YouTube channel. Uh, you can just search Chris R. Hicks, all one word. And uh, I have a show on there where it's called No Filter with Chris Hicks, where I just kind of give a no-filtered, no-nonsense, no-BS approach to various topics within entertainment and uh, creative uh, fields. Right on, right on. So I kind of so, like, yeah, it's kind of like you think it, I say it. <laughs> so, yes. um, yeah, that's yeah, the channel's kind of We're all right thinking now. it. I'm just the one brave enough to say it. Um, and isn't it weird? Isn't it an Orwellian world we live in where just saying common sense stuff is something that you need to be afraid of? You know? I'm sorry? I what said, was that? Isn't it? Isn't it quite the Orwellian nightmare that common sense truth uh, is something you need to fear saying on any public fora? Oh, yeah. And as a person who's a fan of the book, it's terrifying. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, and 1984. It's crazy to me. Right? I think that's part of the reason why um, <coughs> this, this build back for me is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to oh we're still having connection issues 
1984 and Brave New World and Fahrenheit 451. These books were not meant to be a user's manual. Help they were meant to be talk. cautionary tales. Oh, we're still having lag issues. <laughs> Makes for good con uh, uh, content. So, Chris, um, let me ask you a question here when, when we get on a little sync. Do you know my good friend, uh, Lori Calcaterra? Are we still out of sync? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea how to fix that. I'm sorry if that's on my end. Uh, we're go we're going to assume it's your fault because, you know, I, I blame everyone else for all of my <laughs> problems. <laughs> Is it? So, uh, Chris, when you hear this, Lori Calcaterra is uh, she's doing a comic book series <clears throat> called Path of the Pale Rider. <clears throat> but Lori comes from the movie slash Hollywood side of things uh, as a filmmaker. Also, you have absolutely need to look her up and uh, get in contact with Lori and maybe get out on her show here, the Tuesday Morning Brew. You guys have a lot in common and would. Uh, I think have a really great time and conversation. Okay, I think now that you say, I think I have her, I heard the name. I'm I'm aware. Um, I got off Twitter for a while, then um, got back on. But her name rings a bell. I definitely check her out. Yeah, she's a. I don't even think I follow her on Twitter. I think more the better way to find her is Facebook. I could be wrong. Okay. Somebody help me out. Yeah, I'm that. not on Facebook, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, I am, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I come from a fine art background. I'm an impressionist painter. And, you know, uh, back in the day before the world ended <clears throat> in 2020, um, mm -hmm. I did live paints over there every Saturday. Huge oh, cool. following, hundreds of views. But couldn't stream to uh, the the YouTube because back then, you know, uh, I didn't know anything about StreamYard, and you had to have a thousand followers before you could live stream on YouTube in the raw. I didn't yeah. know anything about mm -hmm. StreamYard, so now I'm over here, and I don't know how to stream on <laughs> Facebook anymore. <laughs> Isn't that the conundrum that is life? Yep. Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, uh, Chris, uh, how, what format, first of all, is the book, What Goes Around? Um, sorry, format? Is it a novel, graphic novel? Oh, it's an, I'm sorry, it's a novel. It's a short story. Okay. All right. How many pages? Uh, 35 pages. <clears throat> 35 pages. And it is available. You can go to uh, Chris Hicks's Twitter. And follow his links there. I th your pinned information, Chris. Yeah, I also um, I put a link in your chat under um, "Night is Here." That's my. Okay. That's my dude. <laughs> that's my guy. All right. All um, right. Fantastic. And uh, so, uh, will there be a sequel? Is this an ongoing series, or is it more like? Uh, we're doing some outer limits type stuff here or Alfred Hitchcock. It's funny. Presents. It's funny. You mentioned that. And I've had a strong conversation with my team about not saying outer limits and twilight zone, because originally that's what I wanted this to feel like. Uh -huh. I'm a huge fan of that stuff. I love those one hit. I call them one hit wonders, even though that's mm -hmm. probably not the right term, but those, those shows that get you in there for, they tell you a beginning, a middle and end and, mm -hmm. and they make you think they get you in there, they get you out. And it's cool. It's compelling. Yeah. It's easily digestible. There's not a lot of fluff. It's in, it's out. So yeah. that's what I wanted to do with this. And it, it's, I guess you could say it's set up for series. I've had, I've actually had talks with people of turning it into an animated series, but as far as like a series, not, not specifically, but the next book is going to be a lot in the same tone. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be, you know, 
and set in a different scene. It's going to be set in space, but it's right. it'll it'll be in the same world. It'll be uh, Tarantino like, where the oh, right. world will exist with these characters in it, but then they're not they're not necessarily all touching. Very cool. I like that. Um, yeah, and and I'm going to have to get my hands on a copy and read it. Obviously, uh, <laughs> and these are physical, not digital. But you can they get a digital also? Okay, so once um, the special perks, the 30 are sold, um, once those are shipped and the film has uh, been been through the festival circuit, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, I will release it on Amazon um, so you can pick up a physical copy and a digital copy. Okay, all right, fantastic. I want to <clears throat> wait a little bit in between them because also... Um, if I set myself up correctly, the second book, my third book, but my second book will be coming out when this film is ready to be shown uh, nice. at festivals. And after, after the festival, like I can't have it public if I want to enter festivals. A lot of festivals have strict rules about mm -hmm. putting it online or letting anybody really like hosting it on a YouTube channel and then submitting it to film festivals. A lot of them don't right. want you to do that. So I have to wait until I play the, the festival circuit. But my, my ultimate goal, and I believed in it as much as I did when I when I originally, like I got I almost made this film like three times. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got really mm -hmm. close, but then things in I was I'm I was holding dynamite in my hands when it comes to uh, material for actors. Like I created something that is just these characters are just so uh, they're so they have so much depth and in, depth into them. And I think it, in the way that I want to shoot it, and and the way that I want to interact with the actors and have them breathe life into it, they're like so hungry to get their their hands on these characters. And I really do think that it's going to it's going to win some awards. And I say this because I've already I'm an award winning filmmaker already. I, I'm not trying to be cocky, but right. I I do I do in my heart believe that um, if I can put the talent. And, and put him in the right direction as a director and then give him as much money and support as I possibly can, that this story will um, give people goosebumps. I mean, the ending will make you uh, sick to your stomach mm -hmm. uh, on, on purpose. And it's not there just to say, Ooh, look shock value. No, it's right. there because, Oh shit, it has to be. And you're like, yep. And nobody's going to like it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and you know, as as a filmmaker and, and as an actor myself, at one point, and then working with other actors, um, they're hungry for that. So I love bringing that to them because I get the best out of them as well, and they love doing it. I love doing it. it just makes it for a great for a great um, combination on set. And the people I have coming in at, and from Atlanta and Louisville to come and make this come to life. Um, some people in the film you will recognize. You might not know their name, but you're like, oh shit, I've seen that person before. And I'm like, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I know. Um, and the and they're willing to come in and, and help me bring this uh, bring this to life too. So I couldn't be more um, honored to be honest with you. But it's it's been a long time coming, and I, I really can't wait to to have people also read yeah. this, but also um, be a part of the filmmaking process and see how much actually changes too. Because there's a lot in the book that I added that isn't going to be in the film for cost reasons. Um, right. Because I'm still going to try to make this movie as, as in a stubborn way of saying, look what you can do with little, if you put mm -hmm. your mind to it, if you're MacGyver enough and you're passionate enough, um, because that's what I did with my first short film. Didn't cost me a damn cent. And I, I did it all out of passion and I didn't say a word of dialogue in the entire film. And I, and I, and I won some awards because I was telling a story and sure. I, I, I realized then that that's powerful. So I wanted to be able to uh, inspire as well as tell good stories. What movies inspired you, Chris? Or I should not say, I'm, let me not put that in the past tense. Let's put it in the present tense. What what movies inspire you? What movies inspire me now are few and far between. Uh, what movies inspire me, inspired me to do this before? Um, it's got to be films like Jurassic Park, um, Terminator, uh, thing. Uh, I want to say I'm eclectic when it comes to music. I'm also eclectic when it comes to my film style. But what films inspire me the most are ones that pull emotion out, and that could be good emotions, bad emotions, horror, funny comedy. I don't really like discriminate. 
But what right. really gets me excited is those filmmakers like Steven Spielberg who can run you through the gambit. And I think that Jurassic Park as a 10-year-old sitting on the edge of my seat, when the opening title crawl comes in, it's dark and it's menacing. Mm. And that film sets a tone, but also you go through the gambit of emotions. You're happy, you're sad, you're scared, you're funny, you're laughing, you want to be a fucking dinosaur expert at the end of it. And then, the set you, and then you want to kill dinosaurs. So you're going through all that fun, heroic, epic journey shit. And you're feeling all these feels. And I mean, those are the type of movies. Those, yeah. those, those movies are what really inspire me to like, uh, get off my ass and write a story. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I remember, I will never forget it. As a matter of fact, I wanted to go see Jurassic park when it came out of the movie. So my wife and I went and, uh, the place was filled with these mothers. We went to the matinee. Yeah, so I did too. I thought I was going to get in, thought I was going to yeah. sneak past it, but they were there, man. They were all there. <laughs> yeah, well, there were all these moms with their little kids. They're coming to see the cute dinosaurs. Ooh, ah. And then mm-hmm. there was, to quote Jeff Goldblum, there was chewing and screaming and running. And there were literally parents <laughs> running out the door with their kids. You know, like, oh, my God, I didn't expect this. Uh, and and then I, I thought about it in hindsight. Those, uh, the commercials at first made it look like, oh, they wondrously created this theme park with living dinosaurs. Ooh, ah. Apparently, people didn't watch till the end where there was chewing and running and screaming. So, or hey, didn't Charles. bother to read the books. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. My dad, when I saw the commercial, my dad goes, "It's a book, so you're going to read it first. Mm-hmm. So I read Michael Crichton's book, and I knew, I, and I was, yep. I wasn't young enough to understand that. Oh, if you haven't read the book, go back. It's like watching a different movie. It is. It's, uh, it's really cool. It's really the cool. Comp- the copies um, play play the play the same role or the same effect the little bitty chicken sized dinosaurs as the right, raptors it, do in the movie like the the movie that i get when i in my own head from the jurassic park is 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 is, is special but the movie but yeah um going back to so i i knew what was going to happen <laughs> so like me and my dad both knew this wasn't going to end well and i knew that that was part of the excitement for me yeah i guess i'm yeah. kind of I'm a glutton for the everything's fine until, uh uh-oh, obviously, because my story is the same way. Everything's calm. These guys are making dinner. Everyone's laughing. Uh Uh-oh, here comes two strangers to come fuck it up. I I like that stuff. Worst case scenarios happen. (laughs) Let's see what happens. And throw people in the mix and see what happens. That's fun. Exactly. Exactly. It's good stuff. Charles joining us uh, from his uh, side job as the... uh, manager of a hello chat i didn't comment. say hi to you guys I, i'm not ignoring you i see you all of you that's good charles is uh he's working at a comic book store as a side hustle um but lucky charles, i'd uh, love to have that yeah charles is a writer and he's my best friend i've known him for 33 years now uh so good to see you charles glad to have you here <clears throat> yeah so since since we're almost, a good fight yeah since we're almost synced up um the uh the uh Lori Calcaterra <clears throat> the link to her YouTube is right here. Uh talk to her, come out on her show. You guys have a lot in common, a lot to talk about. Um she knows more about movies Definitely. than I do. I love movies and you know, I mean what I, I absolutely love movies. I collect them. Uh my all time favorite is Casablanca. <laughs> I think it's the greatest movie ever made, hands down. Uh, even though it doesn't have dinosaurs, oh, it's definitely up there. Yeah, it doesn't have dinosaurs or uh, fast. Man, cars. I would love to have been a filmmaker back then, where it's just oh, it's you, the camera, and the actors. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically so, all it really is back then, man. Yeah, yeah, and so I've had people ask the question, you know, would you like to see Pariah or the Jake Bishop series on a screen? And I've thought about it a lot. And my answer is this. Pariah, no. Pariah Mm -hmm. is a trilogy. When it's done, it's done. I want it to be a standalone thing. The Jake Bishop series is my ride or die. I will be doing Jake Bishop from here till the end. Um, Would I like to see that? Yeah. If you could go back and you could film it in black and white as a real noir movie uh, and capture the same lighting effects, the same direction then yes, I would. Otherwise, no, I would not. Dude, you just sound like you just gave me a challenge. 
<laughs> Don't give me a challenge, man, because I'll make it an obsession. <laughs> yeah. I'll find a way to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, someone I told even... me I couldn't make a short film without saying a word and have it be, be worth a shit, and I proved them wrong. So, like, I mean, come on, bring it up. <laughs> yeah, I love it when people tell me what I can't do. <laughs> I, I, I just go out and do it. Um, and I think that's that's every creative I've ever met. You know, it's it's don't tell us what we can't do because then we're gonna do it. <laughs> I don't think you lost sync. It happens. No worries. I hear you now. Sorry so uh, I was looking. Somebody said something in chat. Where did it go? I've lost it. Never mind. Chat. Um, God, man, so many people here, so many cool folks hanging out. Uh, again, the Facebook people, I know you're there. Uh, nothing but love for you. I can't see you in chat over here. Uh, so if you're commenting or whatever, God bless. Uh, I've got a buddy who, uh, he's a musician in a rockabilly band, plays upright bass. He tells everyone I taught him to play bass. I did not. I showed him how to play bass. He taught himself. Um, uh, Buford Ogletree uh, is his name. The band is Hot Rod Walt and the Psycho DeVilles. Uh, they're on YouTube. You can check them out. They're all over the place. Uh, but I was going to say he's another one of those uh, that's just he's got that creative drive. And uh, he's writing a memoir. And uh, I'm editing for him. And it's been a hoot. So my my <laughs> point being, though, if you're an artist, your art is going to come out writing, music, composing, drawing, painting, sculpting, whatever. I'm of the mindset that if you can visualize it, you can do it. Um, I'm a musician. I'm a painter. I'm a penciler in comic books. I've had to become an inker. I'm a writer. Uh, I do all of these things because the impulse to create is insatiable. And I think every creator has that in them. What do you think? Uh, I totally agree. And I try not, I try to walk the line of Jack of all trades or, you know, master of none, but that mm -hmm. you're right. The creative drive to like, pursue it you're right if i, I i'm a, i'm a firm believer too and i i'm not saying i can do it good but uh, if i can visualize it i can pretty much bring it to life i don't know whether or not it's going to be fine art or not um right i taught myself digital art and photoshop manipulation i did the cover art for my book by the way and i do cover art for other authors uh because i couldn't afford it and i'm like and i just basically took something and tried to recreate it yeah 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 I'm doing a, a stretch goal on the campaign is, uh oh, is going to be is learning gonna be, uh, things like ABCs, one, two, three. And the creative yeah. drive is always there. But then now, like, I can't stop making shit. <laughs> like, yeah. I make stuff yes. all the time now. And then, but then I don't want to tell people, well, I'm a filmmaker. I do cover art. I'm not, I don't want to be labeled as the guy with all the slashes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and it's hard to like tell people that when i tell them oh you do this you do that you do that i try to keep it kind of secret like almost like i'm ashamed of it because <laughs> i'm old enough to know that i've run into a few people who and i don't want to who, who who thought of themselves as what i'm saying but they really weren't and i i don't want to be uh confused as one but I also the reason why i can say that with confidence is i actually do put the work in see that's the thing right like, Right. When people like I said, I've sacrificed a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, I think all the slashes and whatever, you know, I, I'm a writer, I'm an artist. I'll put that in uh, descriptions and comments. It's on my trailer, but you know, I'm not going to put in there musician and fine heart painter and blah, 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 blah. Not going to do all those things. Hello, all things serious. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, but I, I think the, 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 the word right now that best encapsulates who I am is storyteller uh, more than artist yeah. or writer. I'm, I'm a storyteller. I love good stories. Love them. Don't care what format they're in. I love a good story. Me too. Hands down. Um, um, yeah, absolutely. 
Even awesome. even music can tell a good story. Oh well, hell yes! Now to me, the apex of music was Queen's uh Operation Mindcrime. I'm going to ask for forgiveness, not permission. I am one day going to do a graphic novel of Operation Mindcrime. Period. And then I'll send it off to Jeff Tate and say, "Hey, what do you think?" And we'll see what happens there. <laughs> Bad luck. Uh, uh oh, I'm I'm losing you, Chris. I, I can hear you, but you're roboting really bad. We've lost your uh your icon on the uh stream yard. So I think your connection's hanging on by a fingernail. Hopefully it clears. Why don't you uh, why don't you leave and come back, Chris? See if that helps you. Exit completely out. Click the link. Come back. There we go. Um, yeah, I mean the internet does what the internet does. <laughs> sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, anyway, in case you're just now tuning in, we've been talking to Chris Hicks, who is a storyteller. Um, hey, Red Bank, what's up, man? Uh, good to see you. Lots of good people hanging out with us today. Let's see what kind of connection we got. Oh, we got the spinning wheel of death. There he is. I think. All right. So we're still having connection issues there. But anyway, it's about that time. We're going to go ahead and start wrapping up here. Uh, you guys, be sure you go over and you follow my man Chris Hicks over on the Twitters and here on the YouTube to stay up to speed on what he's got going on. Interesting guy. I really enjoyed the conversation. Like I said, I don't really do interviews. I just like to have a good conversation with creative people about their passions and what drives them to create and, you know, and what they got going on. Let's, uh, let's see how his internet said night, night. Um, remember a damn dirty thing is launching this Friday. Uh, and that's going to be over on dark gift comics presents until he has to go. It's going to be an all day launch until he has to go on another show for a different topic. He's already booked on. Then at that point, we'll bring it over to the madness and my channel and we'll just keep it going and having a good time. Hey, Red bank. You want to come on? Just let me know. Um, but anyway, we're looking forward to a good launch. And uh, that's this Friday. And then I'm taking the weekend off. I don't even want to see the internet for at least the weekend because everybody knows what comes after the launch. You got to go out on all the channels and you got to shield your product, which is part of the job. I get it. To be successful in any art, you have to make art. You got to show it to people and you got to be nice. The show it to people part is this next part. And it's, it's the, uh, it's the, part i've never been really great at like i can shill for somebody else all day long but when i'm shilling for me yeah not so much uh so i got this book i think you'll like it that's all i really got to say anyway i want to thank chris hicks for coming out uh pops was here he's bailed um, i think he's having internet issues also or more accurately i think the internet's having issues with people <laughs> they must not have liked my uh ai memes what do you guys think anyway chat it's been great uh again happy anniversary tanner hurley my co-host him and his lovely wife uh shannon eller happy birthday to you uh everybody in the chat thank you for coming out peace <laughs>
Look, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm tired of talking to you. <laughs> and don't think it hasn't been a little slice of heaven, because it hasn't. Well, what do you know? I finally got the last word. Oh, good night, everybody! Quentin time! Quentin time!